Hello there and welcome. In this video we are going to be talking about pond air pumps. Pond air pumps are also known as pond oxygenators or pond aerators but they all do the same thing. We're going to be talking about what an air pump is, why is it different to an inside aquarium air pump and why you actually should be using an air pump on your pond. So firstly what is an air pump? Well an air pump is essentially exactly as it sounds. You have a box which has a pump inside of it. Now the pumps do vary but they are generally a pair of bellows or a set of pair of bellows which suck air from the outside environment through it and then they pass out through a valve through an airline and to a stone or set of stones which then releases the air into the pond and that is where you get your aeration and that is essentially how a pond air pump works so this particular air pump is a brand new model from Blagden um, they have a set of large air pumps which replace their koi air range and this particular one is the 2400 but there's a smaller one at 1800 and a larger one at 3,600. Now, one of the things you'll notice if you look at the values assigned to these air pumps is that they move a lot of air. They actually can run a lot of air stones and provide massive amounts of pumping of air into your pond. And this is one of the major differences between a pond air pump and an aquarium air pump. So let's have a quick look at an aquarium air pump and we'll just spot the difference. So this is your standard kind of single outlet aquarium air pump. Now you can get larger ones which have up to four outlets but most of them are around this size and most of them have about one or two outlets which can run one or two medium sized air stones. They're fairly compact and normally the max kind of flow you'll get off an aquarium air pump with the four outputs is around 400 to 500 litres of air per hour. You'll also notice that they have a standard size cable the good ones will be relatively quiet and feature some rubberized feet to minimize vibration. But the one thing they do lack is that none of them are actually weatherproof or waterproof, so you can only really use them inside. If you use them outside, you really have to contain them very well, maybe put them inside of a box or put them inside of a shed. But even then, you'll find that the elements eventually get to them and kill them. So if we look at the pond air pump now, you'll notice firstly that it is a much larger unit, which means that it can put out a lot more air. This particular one comes with 10 outlets, but you can get upgrades like this, which will allow you to increase your outputs phenomenally. Another thing that the metal upgrades have are these valves here, so you can close off um, unused outlets as you require. Another major feature of an outdoor pond oxygenator is the fact that it can handle some acclimate weather. Now this particular one has been very well designed because the air actually goes through this slot here. And what that means is it sucks air in but water can't actually find its way into the diaphragm and that means it is completely safe to be used outside. The size of the slot is actually designed so you don't even get a wicking effect going up into the diaphragm, it just doesn't happen. In fact inside of there is a slight slope to prevent it happening even more. Another feature is the fact that you have very long cables. Now most pond equipment will come with 10 metres of cable, so that means that even if your power supply isn't very close to your pond, you still have plenty of cable to make it to your plug. So they're the main real differences between an inside air pump and an outside air pump. Outside air pumps are generally weatherproof, they kick out a lot more oxygen into your pond, they are generally larger and have more outputs, and you have a larger cable length. So here we have the Blagden Pond Oxygenator working. Um, we're running off one output here. So we're basically just going to be seeing what one air stone looks like um, when it's being run by one of these things. There is a slight hum to this unit, but that is to be expected. Just simply by the way that these work, they produce a lot of vibrations. And to be fair, with the power of this unit, it's actually relatively quiet. And bear in mind, this will be in your garden. It's not going to be in your front room. So, you know, you're not going to be able to hear this and it's not going to disrupt your day. So here's the one air stone running. You can see that's a large air stone and it's absolutely who out the oxygen into this small tank. Now imagine 10 of these going and that's the effect you're going to be having on your pond. 
So why do we want to use air stones in ponds? Well, it's essentially to increase the oxygen in the pond. Now, low oxygen in your pond is the cause of many, many problems. Firstly, on hot days, what happens is a lot of the oxygen can't dissolve into the water and you get problems with low oxygen in your pond. Now, cold water fish like koi and goldfish, they like oxygen. So this is a bit of a problem for them and they start to deteriorate quite quickly in low oxygen environments. Another major thing that uses oxygen in our ponds is bacteria. So every time a bacteria converts waste into nitrate, it will be using oxygen from the pond and removing it away from your fish. Obviously, the bigger filtration you have, the more fish that you have, the more waste is going to be getting processed and the more oxygen that's going to be getting removed. So in this way, you need to add air stones either directly into your filtration unit or you can add them into the pond just to help your bacteria along. And the more oxygen that the bacteria has available means the more filtration that it can do. So it's a win-win situation for both. Another thing that air stones can do is actually circulate water. So as the bubbles go up, it's actually dragging water up with it and it will circulate back round to the bottom and give you a bit of a circulation flow. So in ponds where your pump isn't really giving you enough water movement, air stones can be a really quick and effective way of adding extra flow to your pond. Now as the air is going through this stone and up through the pond and out, it will also be dragging toxic gases out of the water and to the atmosphere. So things like CO2 and um, other toxic gases will be removed from your pond in this way and it will keep your pond healthier. One thing that a lot of people don't realise is when you use medication in your pond, the medication can actually strip oxygen away from the water. So if you're ever medicating your pond, you do need to add an extra oxygen source. And in this way, again, air pumps can help you out tremendously. If your pond is heavily planted, then you might think that it will be well oxygenated. Well, this is the case during the daytime. But the way plants work is during the daytime, when they photosynthesize, they will indeed release oxygen. But at nighttime, they'll actually take oxygen from the water and release CO2. So at nighttime, you can get huge fluctuations in your oxygen levels. And during the nighttime, you can get to a point where your oxygen depletes and that is sometimes why you wake up in the morning to find your fish dead. Now lastly and it's something that a lot of people do not consider and that's keeping your air pump going during the winter. Now everybody knows about putting a football onto the top of your pond to stop it freezing over but you can indeed use an air stone to create that water movement on top of the water and stop it from freezing over. Just like in the summer, it will also create a nice circulation. So if you've turned your pumps off to stop them from freezing, you can use an air stone just to keep the circulation going and also remove any toxic gases that build up during the winter. So thank you for watching. I hope this video has been educational and you now know how an air pump works and why you should be using one. If you like this kind of content, please remember to like this video and subscribe to my channel. Once again, thank you for watching and happy fish keeping.